This brand new gigantic study about Asian Americans just came out for 2024, and you don't want to miss this breakdown of what it found out. Yeah, because we got the stats, or actually, Taft got the stats. Uh, it's the fourth year of the 2024 status report, Andrew. It basically breaks down how AANHPIs, Asian Americans, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders, are perceived and treated in the US. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smile Out Sauce at smileoutsauce.com. Andrew, there's a lot of money, a lot of studying, and just a whole lot of everything that goes into these reports. Oh, a lot of money was put into this report it's a really good powerpoint pdf slide presentation so let's go through it david and i found some of these points very very interesting but let's start at the top all right all right let me just give the executive summary just so you guys can follow andrew number one asian americans don't think that hate towards asian americans has increased but asian americans themselves disagree Point number two, because of discrimination, violence, and lack of representation, only 38% of Asian Americans completely agree that they belong, and even few, fewer feel they are fully accepted in America. Number three, we need to break the status quo. It is our responsibility to advocate for and celebrate AAN HPI stories beyond Heritage Month. So though that is your executive summary high level bird's eye overview but let's just get into the hate part andrew um basically americans think that asian hate has stopped but asians don't mm. yeah i mean if you look at this stat do you feel that the hate towards certain groups or community has changed over the past 12 months uh generally asians say it has increased yes and everybody else is like ah, i don't know all right here's the thing i do see feel less visceral hate at least towards me as a Chinese passing slash real Chinese person since COVID faded though. Mm. I will say that, but I do think that a lot of people still feel that people don't move for Asians on the sidewalk. Yeah. Basically, essentially like pick on them. Yeah. I, I do feel like, I don't want to use the word microaggressions, but uh, you know, I think diff the same people can, can experience the same microaggression or aggression and view things differently. Anyways, this next slide says, David, in 2024, as before, more Americans think race relations have gotten worse in America, AKA the race was in America. America. Continue. I will say this on Instagram, the race wars, I don't know if they're as bad as they've ever been, but so it's yes and no, but definitely like the racial discussion on Instagram has gotten to a point where it's almost like got to reach another stage. I think the race wars in the comment section at least have gotten worse because I think there's even more misinformation out there. There's more information out there. There's more misinformation. There's more things that people are interpreting a certain way. And there's just like this ongoing argument because I go look on different Instagram pages from different communities, you know, even outside of the Asian community and I dip into the what are what are the what's the black Instagram saying? What's white Instagram saying? It's it's interesting. Well, it's kind there. of funny because it's like sitting at their lunch table, but in high school, if you were at the lunch table, it would completely change the conversation. Yeah. Um, moving on, the next slide says Americans agree communities of color experience more discrimination and fewer advantages than white Americans. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this is pretty given that most people still feel this way. Um, so I feel like. Not much to say on that slide, but this next slide, more than four in 10 Americans, that's 43%, show no familiarity with recent tragedies involving Asian Americans. Now, that means basically like pretty much half of the people out there, like they cannot name an Asian tragedy now. But I actually think a lot of Asian Americans themselves, if they don't follow like a neck shark or a jackfruit or et cetera, et cetera, yeah. there's so many different, you know, little uh, digital uh, news outlets you can be tapped into. They might not know themselves either if yeah. they're only tapped into mainstream news. I will say the one new, the maybe, maybe Asian tra uh, tragedy of the past five years that most people can name is maybe like the Atlanta spa shootings, but, but even like, I don't even think they can the that Monterey one. park mass shootings that happened a couple years ago. I think, I think that was even more circulated more amongst the Asian Americans. This next slide relates to it saying a majority of Americans are unable to name a single historical event or policy related to Asian Americans, let alone recent major event. Andrew, this is, throughout the history of America the last 200 years. Right, they can't even name, obviously we're gonna know the Chinese Exclusion Act because that has the word Chinese in it. Japanese internment camps would be another one that I would expect people to know. No, I, no. Got, an, Andrew, I got another one for you. 
Americans remain largely unfamiliar with key events, even when prompted. So even if you were standing there as an Asian being like, okay, okay, what about Japanese internment? They still don't know. So they're like, Japanese internment, like interns I, at my company? I, yeah, it's funny. They're like, yeah, there was this fellow from Tokyo. He did a good job one summer. I'll say this. I think that people know way more about celebrities and like the lives of like Marilyn Monroe or Kim Kardashian, who's sort of the modern Marilyn Monroe, than anything about the entire Asian American race. All right, let me bet, let me bet you this, David. Do you think more Americans know who Michelle Yeoh is? Or they can name a historical Asian event. Right now. Right now. Probably still an historical Asian event. But if you said Jackie Chan, I'm going with Jackie Chan. Okay, Jackie Chan. Yes, yes, yes. Jackie Jackie Chan over that. Michelle Yeoh is more of a recent thing. Right, right. um, Some the next slide. Nearly one in three Asian Americans have been called an ethnic or racial slur in the past year. Bing, bing, bing. Why, why did you raise your hand? Yeah, because I was called a racial slur in the past three years. I was called like, a C-word. Like what level, Andrew? Are we talking about low, middle, or high? No, no, the, the bad one, the bad one, and it was said pretty aggressively, but, you know, I Did I it say, have an F word in front of it? It had an F word. It had all the words that you could think of. Um, I will say this. For <laughs> me, I actually have not been uh, receiving on the receiving end of a hardcore yeah. racial slur in the past year. But also racial slur, it doesn't only mean the C word that rhymes with think. I think that a lot of pe- a slur could be, you know, a curse word or even maybe but, like ching chong lima, blah, 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 blah. I, I do put them on different levels because I'm pretty sure somebody yelled go back to China out of their car window at me, but not like it, it would not you know, in a racist but joking way. Uh, but I know the way you got called effing C word was like in an angry, Go, go back way. to China, I think in this study, if you made me say, would fall under slur. I feel like it would count. Yeah, it because would count. Because it is a racially targeted yeah, thing to yeah, say to somebody who uh, looks mongoloid. Um, the majority of Asian Americans have felt unsafe or uncomfortable because of their race, ethnicity, or religion. Yeah. Uh, yeah, now we're getting in the safety portion about physical attacks, man. I will tell you this. Asians definitely do not feel safe. There's more stats to come. I'm pretty sure that Asians are the most attacked race in America per capita. I'm not saying overall because just the numbers aren't there. Mm -hmm. But in terms of like pretty much everybody else feeling like they can beat up an Asian I am pretty sure that is the situation of the perception. Oh, yeah, and especially if you take into account how much Asians attack other groups of people, which is hyper low, by the way. Like, so insignificant. No, sometimes people think that just an Asian walking around it is provoking to them. That's like how they perceive it. Anyways, it says two in five Asian Americans worry about being the victim of a physical attack because of their race, ethnicity, or religion. You know when that guy uh, late at night called me an effing shink you know think yeah. yeah it was it was in a threatening way he didn't walk towards me and want to fight me and you know i would have had to you know figure out a way to handle that situation but it was said in a way where he was about ready if i talked back to him which i was like yo i'm gonna let this slide mm. i'm gonna keep it moving because this is not the time for me to fight back i had like you know uh, i was not in a position to 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 do that interestingly enough you were actually in a public space which is just a crosswalk um but it says that asian americans feel least safe on public transportation yeah no and and guys you live in san francisco we're talking about the bart train you obviously new york city we're talking about the subway and in every city i think we're thinking about the bus oh there's a subway in chicago there has been cases of asians getting attacked or getting into altercations on the chicago subway and i think it's a commentary on what uh, the job that the public infrastructure or the governments are not doing vetting who's going into public transportation. Yeah. yeah. And also we have to understand that the whole entire kind of culture of being aggressive towards Asians and attacking people, like for some reason, people think that that's okay. Now that's a harder issue to attach because you can't just change people's minds with policemen, but you can do other things as far as like, you know, if, if people have to pay for their fare, it's going to weed out a lot of the people who might, you know, also they, yeah, you know, they want right. to save money, but also they, they, they might attack. And this someone. is more of an internal Asian thing. I think it's really difficult to talk about. Some people are going to be mad that I even brought it up, but I do think there is an issue. Uh, like some people are talking about like weakism versus a uh, racism. You know what I mean? Like if you know, you perceive to be weak and in actuality, you are weak. How much does that play into it, right? Like people are perceiving, reading your Dragon Ball Z power levels as super low, whether you're Asian or not. And that's what is 
potentially also a source of more a provocation. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that generally crazy people who are aggressive that want to attack somebody, they're going to look for the easiest target that has no repercussions. So if they see an Asian person, they're like, okay, this small old Asian person is weak or this Asian person seems weak to me, I can take them on. And also, I can take on the community because there will be no backlash from the police or the Asian community. Or the other Asian riders in the subway cart or something Exactly. Like so people think that they can pick on us because we're weak and that we will not get help. Right. So. Uh, moving on, this goes, goes to a more bigger picture, bird's eye geopolitical sort of view. A majority of Americans say China and Russia are the greatest threats to the U.S., Oh, man, David, oh, man. But they also had a study saying that a majority of Americans believe the Chinese should be separated from the Chinese government, too, in the, also in their view. But I do think for a lot of people, it's pretty murky. Yeah, no, I mean, I think most Americans can separate it. But it doesn't mean just because you separate them that it's 100% separated. You know what I mean? There's always bleed over Yeah, there. yeah, there's always, like, a tinge of feeling, like, from some people. But, no, I would say... Obviously, the people that I come in contact with, I think, like, you know, I don't come off as someone who is, like, a spy for China. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, somebody said nearly 40% of Americans believe that Asian Americans are more loyal to their country in Asia than to the U.S. Whoa. This is interesting to me. 40% of Americans think that Asian Americans, Asians in America, not necessarily American-born Asians, but just Asians living in America are more loyal to a country in Asia. Now... Here's my question, David. Here's my question. Obviously, if you are an immigrant from another country, yes, you may always have some ties to that country. But I want to ask, what does loyalty mean in America right I now? I think sometimes loyalty, as defined by Americans, not logically to a logical equation-based Asian, is how much you hate that country when America tells you to hate it. Okay, that's an interesting point. Because I was going to say, how patriotic is it if you work in America, you pay your taxes... And you are law abiding. Those are like the top three things. So you add to the economy or an industry, you pay your fair share of taxes. So you're not cheating, you're not stealing from the government, you're not trying to scurry away and not pay for like the infrastructure and share money. And then you're law abiding. Like, I think those are the things that generally Asians do, but they're still seen as disloyal because is if you do those three things, isn't that as loyal as like 98% of Americans? Nah, because cause I'd rather take some crazy soldiers that did like eight wars and are traumatized and maybe if they come back and shoot up a mall on accident, they don't mean to because at least they still got that G.I. G. Joe imagery in my mind. Yeah, I think a lot of Amer Asian Americans are empathetic to what happens in Asia, but I don't know if loyal is the word I no, would use. No, dude, it's not, man. It's just they, they just don't feel like a typical American, though. Right. That's true. Somebody said more than a quarter of Americans lack personal relationships with Asian Americans. Oh, the man, you guys don't know any Asians. You don't have relationships with them. Is that fully your fault? It might be a little bit on the Asians' fault, too, but... Might be also your fault. Right. I mean, it's probably a multitude of factors. But Somebody this is why, but, 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 but this is why I do think that it is important. And I hate it because like, I hate to feel like as an Asian in America, you got to like represent for all eight and be like, yeah, I'm like the only Asian, you know, so I got to represent for you. It's kind of Matt, ambassador, no, <laughs> Asian man. No, it's kind of like that one funny quote of a guy saying like, if you hook up with a girl of, a, a foreign girl, then you represent your entire culture to them. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it just if you're a friend, right, if you're the only it, friend. Because it's tough to be like, everybody's the most charming Asian or something to try to combat maybe some preconceived notion that Asians are not charming yeah. friends to have in your friend group. Yeah, I do think I do. I will say this to Asian Americans, though, fellow Asian Americans. I hope that we build enough confidence in ourselves, and I hope that our experiences give us enough confidence that we are able to be friends with other types of people and uh, because I think that's that is important as well. Yeah. Somebody said compared to their own racial group, other Americans see Asian Americans as having a high standing in education and finances, but low cultural and political standing. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, 
Man, hold on. Let me look at this graph for a share of Americans who think status in these areas are higher. Yeah. No, I mean, educational status, obviously. Financial status, yeah, yes. Yeah, I mean, just... Um, Cultural status. The, bu- the bubbles just keep I, getting smaller and smaller. I, I would say the way they perceive Asians is kind of like, if you went to a sports or a blue-collar high school like we did, the way we viewed the ASB president is sort of the way people perceive Asians, where they're like, yeah, good for them, throwing this spirit assembly. Corny. Yeah. Um, somebody just said, uh, white Americans see Asian Americans as more similar in status to themselves, whereas communities of colors see Asian Americans more as people of color. This was kind of interesting. When white people were polled, they would poll Asians as the most similar to them, whereas people of color also said that Asians were more similar to them, I guess BIPOC being more conventionally black and Latino communities. That's really interesting, man. I, um... I don't know what the answer to this is. I think that some no, Asians, this is an interesting part. Of I think some Asians do lean towards white culture for sure, and you know them. But there's also a lot of Asians who lean away from it and lean more into being Asian and you know the other like other cultures of America. So I don't know. That's interesting, but uh, yeah, see, that, that could be a whole video dude, on its own. Dude, to be honest. white this, this, people gotta, think we're on their team. Right. Colored people think we're on their team. Asians are just like I don't know. Maybe Asian Asians are like ah, oh, maybe yeah, I'm on my own was team. Color, but it's not the most easiest color to see when you write it on a white piece of paper. Where um, do we fall? Somebody said, uh, but Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islanders are viewed as BIPOC. Yeah, you mean like uh, like the the football players, <laughs> like Samoans. Yes, they're considered yes. more colored. Yes, and I hate it when people say the Rock. All right, listen, I'm not saying the Rock is not AAPI, but he definitely is mixed. Right. Um. Somebody said majority of Americans cannot name famous people from Asian American subgroups. So here's the chart right here. Uh, Andrew, the most famous Indian they named was Mahatma Gandhi. Dang. Uh, Filipinos. They said the- Manny Pac. Only five percent could name Manny Pacquiao. Damn. One percent Olivia Rodrigo. Um, hey, they said Amelda Marcos, man. That's hilarious for the shoe collection. Uh, Jackie Chan was way up there. Bruce Lee, George Takei, Michelle Yeoh. One percent had said Ho Chi Minh. Yeah, I guess. Yo, that's hilarious. Oh yeah. Uh, somebody said Americans feel increased representation of Asian Americans w- would be most beneficial in science, technology, and healthcare medicine. So that's where people feel like, yes, they would like to see more Asians as doctors. As the neutral, non-political, non-opinionated support staff that is loyal to the medical creed. Listen, I'm telling you, man, I don't really care about seeing your face on the TV screen and kissing on some white, black girl as the hero. I need to see you in, in my doctor's room. Right, not I need it. you diagnosing and, uh, me. And I'm not talking about ER or Grey's Anatomy. I mean, actually... As my surgeon. Yeah, I actually don't even care to see you as a doctor character in a movie. I need you as a surgeon in real life. Um, Seven out of ten Americans believe Asian immigrants have a positive impact on American society. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Like I said, man. Dude, my high school was so American because people knew that the ASB people, they threw the spirit assemblies. They did do some good stuff, put up the, you know, the posters and stuff, but just nobody respected them. Hey, how about uh, figure out a way that, uh, you know, since we, you know, are such a positive impact on society, how about uh, you guys stop attacking us? 38% of Asian Americans, and that makes them the least likely group in America to strongly feel that they belong in the U.S. Um, They say that they also are the least to feel accepted in the U.S., Andrew, by quite a high margin. Mm. Um, Why do you think, Andrew, I know that you think about this sometimes. Do you think Asians are right? wrong or our expectations too high or literally people got to be nicer to us because a lot of Asians they don't feel like they belong or feel accepted well seeing as that a lot of people believe Asian Americans are more loyal to an Asian country uh (laughs) yeah that would lead us to not feeling belonged yeah 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 yeah. I mean I know so much about American culture and American subcultures in so many niches I don't even let people know about on this channel that uh I would say yeah I I I would not even fully answer that question like I fully feel accepted or like I belong. I would say I know everything about America, but th- those are tough words to use. Wait, but but we do have to acknowledge that Filipinos feel the most accepted and East Asians feel the least accepted. I'm not shocked 
at all. Right. Well, Filipinos, I think they're in a different situation because they, they were westernized yeah. for a very long time. Uh, it was an American uh, colony after being a Spanish colony. They speak English. They have a, a Western uh, religion. But, but it does go by age. Obviously, the younger ones. Oh, wait. No, the older people feel more accepted. Yeah, that's interesting. But maybe also their thresholds are completely different. Mm. You know, the older Asian immigrants, they're just super happy to be here too. Um, somebody said, by improving education, boosting visibility, and increasing opportunities to interact, Americans say racism towards Asian Americans will decrease. By improving education, boosting visibility. Yeah, I mean, I think... I, I These think, are real... TV interview yeah. answers. Yeah, I think a lot of the hate and attacks towards Asians is due to a lot of people being in a tough position too, though. So I think their opportunities need to get better and it will quell the hate. But I don't know. I think Asians are going to be seen as outsiders. And when you're looking for someone to pick on, you see a weak outsider. That's who you're going for. Um, long story short, Andrew, at the end of the TAF report, they said there are no easy solutions to addressing these challenges. Anti-Asian sentiment is deeply rooted in the country, spanning beyond today's political rhetoric and the cloud of COVID-19. So basically, they're talking about way back to the old days, multiple wars fought in the East, against the East, with the East, against the beast, calling them cheats. Who knows? Um, ultimately, I'll say this. Uh, I think that there's hope. I do think that culture changes slowly, Andrew. Culture changes even slower than you think. However you think, however slow culture changes, which is made up of a trillion variable factors, like a little atoms and ions, Andrew, it changes even slower than that. Yeah, I think all Asians can make an impact and boost all these numbers that are too low in this status report. I think that, that uh, you know, but you're going to have to think about it a little bit. I think, like, obviously the videos that we do, I do think they help if you watch them. Um, I think that there's a lot of other people that help you kind of grapple with this. And uh, uh, in America... Some more uh, uh, clarify your cloud of darkness. Yeah. So anyways, guys, uh, that was a gigantic report on Asian Americans. It had a lot of money put in behind it. They pulled a lot of people. They asked a lot of specific questions. And I thought it was very interesting. We have the data now. The data is here. I'll tell you this, Andrew. Culture changes slowly, but you as an inv individual can change very quickly. Wow. Just think about that, guys. You can change very quickly. The culture changes incredibly slow. Let us know in the comments down below what you guys think about this. What did you find interesting? Uh, I'll leave the link to the status report down below. TAF.org, T-A-A-F, the Asian American Foundation. Uh, shout out to them for spending money on and doing this. All right, so hit that like button. Let us know what you think. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.